Welcome to Average Joe's. Today we're bringing you another in our pool cue review series of videos. In this particular video, we're going to be looking at the Sledgehammer, the SH1 by McDermott. So the Sledgehammer is a dedicated brake cue from McDermott. Now it's important to point out that this technically is not a McDermott branded product. McDermott uh, reserve that moniker for pool cues that are manufactured at their own facility in the USA. USA! USA. Whereas the Sledgehammer Q is manufactured outside of the US, most likely in Asia. But don't let that put you off because some of the biggest names in the pool Q industry have their cues manufactured in China. It doesn't mean that it's a poor quality Q, far from it. Now I am obligated to disclose that the previous owners were murdered in this house. So here is our brand new Sledgehammer Q and in just a moment we're going to open this up. But before we do that, let's take a quick look at packaging. This uh, particular queue comes packaged in this clear poly bag uh, with a few uh, McDermott logos dotted along it. Now, unfortunately, when a pool queue comes uh, in one of these poly bags, it doesn't give the best first impression. If it's a budget queue, sub $100, and it comes in a poly bag, that's kind of to be expected. However, when you get into the range of several hundreds of dollars, it would be nice to see a little bit more thought going into the packaging. And in actual fact, some manufacturers are now presenting their queues in really nice swish boxes. Kind of like opening a brand new phone or a brand new tablet or something like that, it comes in a really nice box. And opening that box gives you a really good first impression of that product. However, when you spend several hundred dollars and it just comes in a poly bag, the same as a, a $30 keyword, it's a little bit disappointing and doesn't give you that first impression once you've unpackaged it. That said, of course, this packaging is only superficial and will be thrown away. What's important is what's inside. So let's have a look. So let's take a look at some of the features and the technology that's incorporated into the Sledgehammer Q. So one of the main features of this Q is actually the ferrule. Now the ferrule on this Q is actually patented, so you won't find this particular design on any other brake Q. So for this particular design, the end of the Q is drilled out and the ferrule actually has a tail that fits inside the tip of the Q. And what this is designed to do is to optimize the energy transfer. And the theory behind this is to increase both power and accuracy. And on the end of the ferrule here, we have a phenolic resin tip, 13.25 millimeters. And the construction, as we would expect from McDermott, is hard rock maple. Having a good solid piece of wood in your hand is quite often useful. And what we have for the grip on this particular cue is what they refer to as a sports wrap. It's a textured rubber finish, uh, complete with the sledgehammer logo. And for the joint, we have a standard 3 8 by 10. Uh, for the butt cap, uh, rubber butt cap with the McDermott logo. Uh, this is uh, the standard uh, 19 ounce uh, version that we have. Uh, it is available in uh, other weights. And uh, we do, at, at 19 ounces, we definitely do have a weight fitted into the rear of the queue. The Sledgehammer queue has a current retail price of $445. However, you can get a little bit cheaper. You can currently buy it on Amazon for nearer $420. And we'll add Amazon links into the video description below. So please help to support us if you're interested in this queue and check out those links. Now, with regards to the warranty, unfortunately, this is a slightly confusing area. When you go onto the McDermott website, they clearly lay out what the warranty terms are for each of their brands of queues. But on their warranty page, they have all of their brands listed apart from the Sledgehammer. Now, it may well be the case, and we assume that it is, uh, that the Sledgehammer would come under the same warranty bracket as McDermott and Stinger cues, which would mean it would have a full lifetime warranty, including warpage. However, because it's not currently very clear on the McDermott website that that's actually the case because they don't specify it for the Sledgehammer, we can't be 100% certain. But we have emailed McDermott and notified them that the Sledgehammer warranty information is not currently on their website. So hopefully they'll get that updated by the time you have a look. That's how it's done, son. That's how it's done, son. So let's look at first impressions on the Sledgehammer queue. 
Now what's quite surprising is uh, straight out the packet the uh, black finish which is a quite a high gloss actually has lots of um, finger marks on it and that obviously hasn't been me uh, maybe that's been in the uh, in the factory uh, but it's uh, almost looks quite grubby when you uh, when you shine it in the light and additionally looking at the uh, the rubber grip here uh, there's definitely a raised seam uh, where the two um, uh, sections meet as they wrap around and are joined together and right at the uh, tip of that here it almost looks like a, a small uh, fault uh, just there the uh, feel of the uh, rubber grip it's made from uh, two colors it's like a, a gray and a black and it feels like the uh, the black is a little grippier than the uh, than the grey section. And although technically this is not a McDermott branded product, Sledgehammer is its own brand, uh, we do have the uh, McDermott logo uh, just on the end here and also on the uh, butt cap. Taking a quick look at the shaft, yeah, it's definitely got a slight uh, pro taper, quite a nice profile. Uh, the socket does appear to be wood. A fairly short ferrule length, nice phenolic tip, very very smooth, very good finish. As is usual with uh, McDermott products, the finish feels really good. You can't feel any flat spots or imperfections. It does come with a little uh, label just above the handle here. And it's going to be interesting to see how easy that is to peel off. So with regards to length, it doesn't state on the McDermott website uh, what length this should be. Uh, we would imagine that it should be 58 inches as a fairly standard length. The actual length that we're getting is closer to 59, I'd say 58 and 3 quarter inches. And shaft length we have a smidge over 29 and 1 quarter inches. And for our butt length, pretty much bang on 29 and a half. Butt diameter on the threaded end. 21.7 millimeters and on the butt cap end 32.4 millimeters as we can see our tip diameter bang on 13.25 millimeters shaft diameter 21.7 millimeters and for weight 19.1 ounces So our 19 ounce Q came fitted with a 1 ounce weight. 20 and 3 quarter inches. The first test is the most common, which is a simple roll on the table surface. So as we can see in the table rolling test, we can actually hear the join in the rubber sports grip as it rolls. But on the table surface, it's looking really straight. An easy pass, so on to test two. What are you doing? That's how I roll. And the second test will be rolling the cue against the hardwood rail of the table. And on our rail test, if you look very carefully at the tip, you can see that it appears to have a very slight bit of wobble. So let's find out for sure with the toughest test of all, it's on to the rollers. God damn, your drunk tests are hard. And as you can see, this cue does indeed have the tiniest amount of wobble. But remember that this test is particularly harsh, and so the majority of cues when they're on the rollers will show a tiny amount of wobble. I know I wobble and you know why wobble. Just like we can see on the sledgehammer. So there's absolutely nothing to be concerned about by the tiny amount of wobble that we're seeing here. This is a very nice and straight cue. So for our first performance test, we'll be looking at squirt over a distance of 75 inches, which is the distance from the head spot to the rail on a nine foot table. We'll be using maximum parallel English coupled with a hard hit, and this will be tested on both sides to try and get as an accurate result as possible. Now, although this factor is far less important on a break cue than it is on a playing cue where you're likely to use English far more often, it's still always interesting to know. And the sledgehammer came in at two and three eighths inches, which is pretty much bang on average. But one time I wrestled a giraffe to the ground with my bare hands. What? For our second performance test, we're going to be testing the cue's natural pivot length, which is a useful way to gauge how low a cue's deflection is. Typically, the longer the natural pivot length, then the lower the deflection that the cue has. 
This test involves placing two balls either side of the centre pocket and extending the length of your bridge backwards until you find the maximum length that you can hit the ball into the pocket using both full power and full backhand English. And the sledgehammer came in at 11 inches, which is a fairly average result. And again, although this aspect is nowhere near as important in a break queue as it is in a playing queue, it's always good to know. So we now know what a sledgehammer cue is, but is it any good? Now here at Average Joe's, as with every product that we review, we ensure that that product gets at least five hours use before we make any type of evaluation. So let's get this bad boy chalked up and let's get breaking. Wake up, we're naked. Yeah. Talking rainforest sweating. Fill the bathtub full of sweat. It's on. So I've now been playing around with the uh, sledgehammer for a good couple of weeks. I've used this for every single uh, break uh, during that time and also I've had several uh, sessions dedicated to just practicing breaks. So I'm getting quite familiar with this cue. So with that in mind, what are my thoughts on the sledgehammer by McDermott? Well, first off, let's have a look at the appearance of this cue. So I'd say it's quite a plain looking cue. It has the, uh, the black finish. Uh, complete with the rubber uh, black and grey handle. It doesn't really have any uh, any flourishes or any kind of extra stylings to it. Uh, remembering this isn't a particularly cheap cue to buy, uh, I would like to see a, a little bit more in regards to design. It is quite plain. As you well know, appearances can be deceiving. But I would say it is quite a modern look and also quite a sleek look, which may well appeal to some people more than a decorative finish. But personally for me, at this kind of retail price for a queue, I would definitely like to see it a little bit more with regards to design. It is a little bit plain for my personal tastes. And sometimes, of course, being understated can be an advantage. A true warmth in sheep's clothing. But for my money, I would like a little bit more with regards to design. Now, one of the key things that I definitely would like to address, which I have a love-hate relationship with, is the sports grip on the handle. There's a couple of really nice features uh, with this sports grip. I do like the way that the whole thing has been shifted down towards the end of the butt. Normally it would start somewhere around here and end somewhere around here, but they've literally shifted the whole thing back. So that allows you to take your grip all the way back to the very, very end of the queue, which can be really useful when you're doing brake shots. Also, I quite like the way uh, that the black parts have slightly more grip to them than the grey parts. Now that part of the design may not be intentional, but it is quite handy because you can kind of uh, get that grip in the position that feels the most comfortable for you. And likewise, you've got the pattern that runs in different directions. So again, you can kind of get it, get a feel for it, and there'll be a certain position that feels right for you. And also it's a very nice look. Uh, it is a, a, a sporty look, and again, it is quite modern and slick, finished in that black and grey. So that's why I love this grip, but what about the heat? Well, being a taller player, what I find is that in my stance, I sometimes have the cue gently grazing my chest or, at the very least, my clothing. And what I found with this being rubber, it tends to grab onto either your chest or your clothes. And if you're not careful, this thing will literally try and rip your nipple off. I'm petrified of nipple chafing. You have sensitive nipples. They chafe. In years. And so with that in mind, I'm not actually sure how much this handle actually adds with regards to performance. You know, is this rubberized grip somewhat form over function? And given the choice, I think I would actually prefer a wrapless handle uh, version of this cue. Now that doesn't exist, but if it did, uh, I really don't think it would take anything away from the performance. So I think this grip, although it's kind of a, it looks nice and uh, it kind of does the job, 
uh, it, I don't think it's absolutely required. It probably doesn't add much to your braking power. Next, looking at the uh, the shaft here. And I'm ready. Can you dig it? Now the shaft does have uh, a gentle taper. Uh, tapers in just around this point here, so it's quite long. Uh, but it's quite nice to have a, a taper on a brake cue. Obviously, you want to keep that as kind of as chunky and as stiff as you can because you're trying to transfer a lot of uh, power through that shaft. Uh, but it's still nice to see that it does have that taper and it kind of gives it a more kind of um, accurate pinpointy feel when you're looking down the shaft. And one thing I really, really like is the seal that they've used to uh, actually seal up the shaft. It's really, really glossy and really really smooth especially if you're using a glove you get virtually no resistance it slides backwards and forwards super super easily uh, it's different to um, the kind of finish that you see uh, on other cues uh, from the McDermott house uh, and it's really really nice so that's definitely a big big bonus Additionally, I really like the uh, the tip uh, McDermott are obviously doing some excellent work with their phenolic tips right now and uh, this holds a nice thin layer of chalk really, really well and also evenly. Uh, what I found on some other uh, phenolic tips, especially on kind of uh, cheaper cues, is uh, they get to a point where they become slightly inefficient holding that chalk and you get almost a kind of a camouflage uh, pattern when you start applying the chalk to it. Uh, but the uh, tip that they've used here on the sledgehammer is a uh, uniform and even and really, really does hold the chalk well. And the other thing we should mention, of course, is this uh, ferrule, which uh, has the patented technology. Now with the ferrule, obviously you can't actually see the internal uh, part of it within the uh, tip of the shaft there. So it's kind of uh, quite hard to get a gauge of um, how efficiently that's doing what it's designed to do. That said, this design has been around for a good number of years. Uh, originally uh, designed by Mike Gugliassi. And so many, many players over the years have used the Sledgehammer Q in its various different guises. So I think we can rightfully assume that having this uh, patented technology does add something to the performance of this Q. So with all that in mind and this hidden technology within this Q, how well did I find this Q performed? Well, it is definitely a powerful cue and you can generate some serious power using this. But it's always important to remember when it comes to a brake cue is people often think, well, what I'll do, I'll just buy a brake cue and that will double my braking power. Well, unfortunately, it's not that easy. Improving the technique of your brake will probably help you out a lot more than having a dedicated brake cue. It is like a finger pointing away to the moon. A dedicated brake cue absolutely will not double the power of your brakes. But it could add a 10, maybe 15% additional power to your brakes. And at the top level of pull, of course, that becomes a massive advantage. So as long as you're realistic in your expectations of what a dedicated brake cue will bring to your game, you probably won't be disappointed in buying one. As I mentioned before, definitely this cue is capable of generating a lot of power. But when it comes to braking, it's not all about power. You also want to ensure you have accuracy and that's where this excels. And what you often find when it comes to running brakes is that if you're trying to hit the balls as hard as you possibly can, that sometimes that accuracy can suffer. You might accidentally add a bit of spin to the ball and see the ball spin off in uh, directions you weren't expecting and end up spinning on the spot for 10, 20 seconds after you've made that break, uh, all sorts of crazy things can happen. But with this, I definitely found that you can try and hit it as hard as you can and the accuracy still remains consistent. So you can be quite confident in this cue when you're running your brakes that you can hit it as hard as you can but still be pretty good on accuracy. I must break you. And for me, that's where this cue excels. You know, you're capable of braking uh, hard with, with any cue effectively. Uh, it doesn't have to be a brake cue. We could even pick up a cheap brake cue for $50, $60, $70 and brake pretty hard with that as well. But it's that combination of having the power coupled with the accuracy. And that's why I found this to be a really, really solid and reliable brake cue. And definitely superior to quite a number of brake cues that I've played around with in the past. So for my money, it's a really good and useful tool to add to your arsenal. Yes, it's a little bit plain looking, but you've got to remember this is only designed to do one thing and one thing well. And you might be wondering, you know, should I buy a dedicated brake cue like this or should I go for a combined jump and brake cue? Um, a Dermot uh, do one that's very well known called the Stinger. And although it does seem to be the case that combined jump and brake cues are far more popular than these dedicated cues, having a tool that's dedicated to doing one job 
is far superior to having a tool that tries to do two very, very different jobs. And so yes, it can be a pain, you've got an extra queue to carry, but if you were to buy yourself a dedicated brake queue coupled with a dedicated jump queue, and you probably find that having the two dedicated queues will give you a better performance overall than having a combined queue that's trying to do the two jobs in one. And with that in mind, it's worth noting that the uh, Sledgehammer is actually the only dedicated brake queue that McDermott supply. McDermott supplies several options of combined jump and brake queues and also uh, dedicated jump queues as well. But as far as dedicated 100% brake only queues, this is the only one that you can get by McDermott. Now at $420, this definitely isn't a cheap queue, especially as this will be a secondary queue in your arsenal because this is going to be used only during your breaks. But that said, if you're serious about your game of pool and you want to improve your breaking game, then this queue could be perfect for you and should definitely be added to your wish list when you come to choose your queue. It will be mine. Oh yes, it will be mine. So it's now time to award the Sledgehammer Brake Queue with its official Average Joe's rating. So first of all, starting with features. The Sledgehammer is a fairly ordinary looking queue with an attractive sports grip but few other flourishes. It does however have a patented ferrule design which makes it completely unique. So we'll award a 14 out of 20 for features. Next, on to straightness. Now whilst we did have a tiny bit of wobble whilst the queue was on the rollers, it should be pointed out that this is an extremely punishing test. And it's very rare to find a queue that has absolutely zero movement on the rollers. So what we have here is not perfect and we would like to see better at this price, but it's definitely within the boundaries of acceptable. So we'll award a 14 out of 20 for straightness. Next, on to performance. Now this is where the sledgehammer really excels. It allows you to apply maximum power without sacrificing on accuracy. At $420, it's definitely not a cheap queue, but it probably sits somewhere around the mid-range when looking at dedicated brake queues from the larger queue brands. So we're definitely getting strong performance for a not unreasonable price. So we'll award a 17 out of 20 for performance. Now on to quality. Now despite not being a USA made queue, as you might usually expect from McDermott, you can clearly see the level of quality and workmanship that's gone into this queue. None of its elements look or feel cheap, which is exactly what we would expect to see at a queue at this price level. So we'll award a 16 out of 20 for quality. Finally, value for money. Now again, at $420, it is a considerable investment into a dedicated brake queue. But remember, this is a specialist product and the manufacturers know they won't sell these in huge quantities, especially compared to playing queues. And shopping around looking at potential alternatives to the sledgehammer from other large brand queue manufacturers, we found that many of the competing alternatives actually came in more expensive. Therefore, we'll score the sledgehammer a 14 out of 20 for value. So, adding up all of these scores, we get an official Average Joe's rating of 75 out of a potential 100. A very solid score for a very solid hitting queue. So thank you for watching. If this video has been useful or entertaining, could you please do us a favor and hit that like button before you leave us? It really does help us out. Likewise, if you could please consider subscribing, we've got loads more great content waiting for you to check out on our YouTube channel. And until the next time, keep on keeping on. Son of a bitch!